Welcome to Trinity to Go, a ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church in downtown Bismarck. I'm Pastor Mark Narum. It is a blessing to be able to gather outside and worship with you on this beautiful morning. We are in the 13th week of Pentecost here as August comes to a close and September with Labor Day comes screaming our way. But for now, we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather this day, let's share our prayer of the day. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son that we may gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. First reading today that we're going to share is from Romans, the 12th chapter. Here's a little bit of background. In response to God's merciful activity, we are to worship by living holistic, God-pleasing lives. Our values and viewpoints are not molded by the time in which we live, but are transformed by the Spirit's renewing work. God's grace empowers different forms of service among Christians, but all forms of ministry function to build up the body of Christ. A reading from Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Paul writes, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and perfect and acceptable. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher and teaching, the exhorter and exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Our gospel reading today comes from the 16th chapter of Matthew, and again, a little bit of background. At a climactic point in Jesus' ministry, God reveals to Peter that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of the living God. And Jesus responds with the promise of a church that will overcome the very gates of Hades. A reading from Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. Excuse me, the 13th verse. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. It's that time of year again. Kids have headed back to school, and that means here at the church we are prepping for the beginning of fall programming. Part of that is getting together and welcoming our new batch of kids who will be coming into our confirmation program, the sixth graders. We started on Saturday with 
a little bit of a retreat, a chance to talk to kids, a chance to talk to parents, a chance to kind of set some expectation and some goals together to be thinking about what it means to be a beloved child of God. At the same time, those who are wrapping up their time in confirmation are sending in their faith statements. So those are our ninth graders who will affirm their baptisms on Reformation Sunday, which is the last Sunday of October. The assignment is really pretty simple. Of course, I took a simple assignment and was able to put directions together that are two pages long, but here's the basis. Tell me what you believe. What do you believe that Jesus is up to in your life? Why is this one your Lord and Savior? Confirmation, the three years that we get together, is all about the ability for the kids to decide if what their parents did years and years ago when they were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, if they believe that, if they believe that they're a child of God, if they will say, yeah, this is now my baptism and I plan to carry my faith out and this is how I'm going to do it. That's what this two-page assignment is all about and my inbox is beginning to fill with those faith statements. So here's my question. What if each of us were asked to do a faith statement? So to sit down and write for ourselves, why do I believe? I got thinking about that today because of our readings, both the reading from Romans and the reading that's before us from the Gospel of Matthew. So it seems to me that each time we gather for worship, or almost every time, there are two points of confession. We begin in confession where we come before God in honesty, telling God what is heavy on our hearts those places that we have failed, the things that maybe we're ashamed of or embarrassed of, the times that our words or actions have hurt other people, or the times that we've walked away when, sh when we would should have said or done something. We have the ability in confession to come forward before God and be honest and then to hear words of absolution. Words that say, from God's own mouth, for Jesus' sake, you are forgiven. See, this honesty of confession is an incredibly powerful tool because it allows us to be vulnerable, knowing that even in the midst of that vulnerability, we are still named as beloved children. God, the Father of our Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, loves us beyond all. That's it. Period. But see, we're, we're left in that confession part. We're left in that place, and then words of absolution are spoken over us, and we hear words of forgiveness. I think that's the basis of our ability then to go into confessing. Confession, being honest, being forgiven, gives us the ability to confess this one who is the author of life. So in worship, we get together and we confess as we share together the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, but in life, we get to confess as well. Confess what God has been up to in our midst. Confess the way God has set a path in our life. Sometimes how God has carried us, nurtured us, cared for us. But we're changed in the midst of this, in the midst of confession and confessing. Romans talks about not being conformed to this world, but being transformed. I believe that as we enter into confession, as we enter into this time of honesty, we begin to be transformed. Transformed as we understand that we are not rejected in our sin and sinfulness, 
but that we are enveloped in God's love for Jesus' sake. Transformed into the kind of people who God wants us to be, sending us out, serving our neighbor in all sorts of ways. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the good news. Confession is open to us so that we may hear the good news that we are forgiven, allowing us to grab hold of that grace and mercy, the ability to go out and confess it to the rest of the world, to be able to say, this is where my hope is, in the one who died and rose again for me and for all others. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, we do give you thanks. We thank you for the beauty of this day, for the gift of rain which has fallen, for the gift of crops that are being harvested, for the gift of teachers who are teaching the rest in the educational system, whether it is an aide or a principal, a maintenance worker, one of the lunch ladies. Lord, we thank you for all of them. Lord, we pray that you would be with those who are sick or hurting, those who are in need of your healing hand. You know who they are. We lift them now in the silence of our hearts. Lord, we pray. We pray this day for a world that needs peace. We pray this day for the island of Maui and all of the destruction that has happened there, for California and the mudslides and all that's happened there, for those who continue to experience these incredible days of heat, bless and keep people. We lift this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to join me in the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, I do have a couple of announcements that I want to share with you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the... Um, our address up on the screen so that you have a chance to write that down. Invite you to share your tithes and offerings. It's because of your generosity that we are able to continue this ministry the way we are. The reason that we're able to have staff and materials to gra gather those sixth grade parents together and those kids as they start their confirmation journey. It's a powerful time to be involved in the church, a time when there are plenty of questions out there and we're present to be able to walk with people in the midst of their questions. The truth is we can't always answer them, but we get to walk and we get to grow together in our love of Jesus Christ. What else is going on? Well, you can download our bulletin at trinitybismarck.com. You can see all of the announcements that are there. Rally Sunday is coming up September 10th. If you've got kids or grandkids that aren't connected to a church, bring them to Rally Sunday. Get them registered in Sunday school. Get them connected. Be the one who would walk with them. It is one way that you can confess just by walking with those kiddos and helping them learn more about this one who loves them. We're getting ready also on September 10th. We have a team from Trinity who are walking in the out of darkness walk up at the state capitol. Activities start at noon and by two o'clock we'll be walking. This is a great way to come together um, and support those who are struggling with mental health issues, especially suicidal ideation, to raise some money so that there can be resources in the community to try to help people find hope. Lots more going on. Look at the bulletin. But in the meanwhile, know that you are always welcome to come worship here at Trinity Lutheran because when we say that all are welcome, we really do mean that. There is a place for you no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what your past or your present is, you will find a place of welcome here. But at this moment, 
receive the benediction. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and always. I'm Pastor Mark Narum. It has been my honor and my privilege to be able to worship with you today. Until we meet again, may God bless you.